Well, when faced with adversity, you have a decision to make. Do you give up and quit? Or do you double down? All right, so this thing has been leaking transmission fluid out of the bell housing for probably the better part of three years. I pulled the transmission out and did the torque converter seal uh, maybe a year ago, year and a half ago. That didn't fix it, so I bought the whole kit to reseal the pump, and I'm ashamed of how friggin' dirty this thing apparently got sitting in here, and that this thing's been leaking oil for so long. So I got degreaser and parts. I'm gonna go try and put it up on the lift and see if I can't fix this leak, because I am tired of it. Can you smell the dirt even in here? All right, how are you feeling today? Alrighty. The super sucker's getting the fluid out of it. So maybe we'll save some mess later. This thing super sucks. All right. Well, the Harbor Freight Jack blew a seal trying to pick up this GM iron. So we'll get the bigger one. All right, this one ought to do it. Leak though, check that out. Oh, um, I'm ripping the gasket. Out. I'll put a little RTV on it. Uh, so there was quite a bit of gold in the pan, assuming that's from a bushing somewhere. No idea where. If it becomes a problem, then I guess it'll let me know. All right, pulled the filter out of it, and that is the top of it. Don't think that is normal. Gonna have to do some reading on that. All right, trying to get the bell housing off, and uh, the socket is now flipping me off because it blew to pieces. I just wanted to preface the little rant I was about to have with the fact that all of this was after going through every forum I could find about removing these bolts and finding that every single forum was recommending the wrong tool for removing these bolts and then having everybody complain about how crap the design is and how crap the bolts are. And it was all because they were using the wrong tool to get the bolts out and then stripping them. So, not sure how it didn't occur to anybody to question whether or not they were using the right tool, but everybody was super adamant that they, you know, that this Torx plus whatever bit was the right one, but nobody ever questioned it. So, anyways, it was another case of getting incorrect information from forums, and at this point, with my experience with them, I would say that an internet forum or at least an automotive internet forum, is the most dangerous place for someone looking for information because I have gotten more wrong information from forums than I have ever gotten right. I mean, it it's rare whenever someone in an internet forum actually gives some worthwhile information. But anyways, the following tone is just me boiling over a little bit. All right, the bell housing is off. I'm not sure if it really needed to come off, but it's off now. The other deal, some of these are hot, is uh, these hellacious little things here. That is not a T50. The internet will tell you if you Google on the forums, it'll say, oh, you need a T50 plus. You need to go do some searching and pay $60 for this one special bit. Total BS, lies and deceit, could not be further from the truth. Go get yourself. The correct tool, which apparently is just these metric, I don't know what the technical name of them is, but it's whatever, like a star bit, I guess is imperial units, and then whatever the equivalent, the metric equivalent is. So this one is just a nine millimeter, and if it'll focus, focus on it. So you can see the head of it matches The head of the bolt, unlike with the star bits. Just adding some more to the rant. Every other bolt on this transmission is metric. I'm not sure how it didn't occur to anybody that maybe the bell housing bolts would also be metric and have a metric specific tool to go with them. You can see this one's a lot thicker. So that apparently is the socket that you need. 
So for pulling the pump, per the instructions I had, wow, wow, did that, okay, now it fixed itself. Uh, unclip this, pull that out, so for some reason, and then unbolt this guy and pull it out because if you don't pull this out, then it'll break off in the pump and then you have a fun day. So now we're gonna try and pry on the pump and see if it'll just pop on out of there. All right, vice grips, hammer, prying right here. That seemed to be the method for getting that pulled. Yay. Yeah, there's probably a, a circle and a red line through that in a book somewhere, but he got it out. All right, pump is out of it. Just hanging out on the ground. So rebuild kit, there's the part number and stuff. And you can tell that I'm real proactive about stuff because you can see that I clearly bought this recently. It is January, 2023 now. So all it is is replace this gasket, the O-ring on the outside of the pump. These little O-rings go under the bolts and I don't know, might not do this seal since the current one is pretty much brand new. And then it'll be popped back in. All right, so I think this is ready to go back together. So knocked the, the old bushing out because the kit came with a new one. And I believe the idea is that if this bushing goes bad, it lets the torque converter walk around a little and then the seal will not seal. So getting that out was kind of a pain because we didn't have the right tool. It was a combination of knocking it out with this and then going to this slightly smaller one and then getting the other one in started with this and then finishing it off with this. And then I used a little rat tail file just to clean the edge of the bushing up where it got a little messed up. That's all fine and dandy. Uh, we took had to take the pump apart to do that, dumped the veins all over the ground. Uh, they are inspected and cleaned now. And it's ready to be bolted back together and then we'll put the O-rings and stuff back on it. And it was just these five bolts that held the pump together and it was what, 13 foot pounds? 18. 18 foot pounds allegedly. Yeah. So that's what they're gonna get torqued to. Uh, there's these two little guys here that'll fall out. There's that orange piece and then the black piece on the other side of it, those seal something. It's a 13 vein pump. Uh, so this piece wanted to fly out. There's that little dowel that goes in there. It has a tiny little spring under it that'll also come flying out. That actually, we might have to push that down just a little bit. Uh, on this side, it has that filter there. I shot carb cleaner through this end of it to clean that filter out while we were here. And I think that was all the bits that just came falling out of it. So now we'll just put it together. All right, everything with the pump is lubricated. So all the veins and everything's lubricated, all the O-rings, the bushings. Uh, still gotta put some oil on that. For install tools, I grabbed some metric bolts. Uh, M8 by 125, and I got two different sizes. But it seems like the 100 millimeter long one is plenty long enough. Anyways, these, I'm gonna thread them into the transmission to hold the gasket and line the pump up, and I cut the heads of them off so that we can unscrew them whenever we're done. Okay, another thing of note is so this transmission is currently in a two-wheel drive configuration, but it started life as a four-wheel drive. So because of that, you get a different pan with the four-wheel drive that is deeper to hold more fluid. Consequently, you get a different filter. It has a longer snout on it because what the filter basically rests on the bottom of the pan. So what actually happened to this transmission some number of years ago is parts guy gave my dad the wrong filter. It was the short one. And it popped up in there and it worked fine until we hit a big bump up in the mountains and the filter fell out of the pump and it ended up uh, pretty much killing the transmission. So made sure that that is the right filter. It matches the one that came out of it. So you gotta make sure that you get the right filter for the right pan. All right, getting ready to put the bell housing back on. Gonna use Loctite on everything. Got some different bolts because I don't really care for the other ones. It seems like it'd be easy to strip it out. So same thread pitch, same length, got a washer with it. I'm gonna use these instead. All right, all the bolts are in. This definitely seems like the better way to go. Time will tell, but I have much more confidence in being able to take that off as opposed to the other style. So all this is torqued and ready to go in. All right, it was not particularly easy, but it is back where it belongs as is everything else. So went ahead and degreased and pressure washed the underside of the truck. And then we can see if it leaks. All right, 
at the home shop now. Last night was the depths of despair. Didn't even bother doing an update on anything because I was so friggin' mad about it. Got the thing together. Reverse worked just fine. First worked just fine. No second gear. Third gear worked just fine. No fourth gear. So, on the bright side, it doesn't seem to leak, but it lost second and fourth. And the only thing that I can come up with going through the factory service manual for the 4L60E. Unless it's the only logical or the most likely logical explanation I can come up with is whenever we were jacking with it, the band for the 2-4 drum popped off somehow. So, uh, went and bought a Pittsburgh, whatever, Harbor Freight transmission jack because it's the only one that I could find in town. And I'm going to do it the old school way here in the garage just because I don't want this thing sitting on the lift for two months while I get this figured out. At least it'll be here if I if it takes that long. So I'm just going to undo everything I did yesterday, get the transmission out, pull the pump back out of it, and hopefully I'll see a smoking gun somewhere. Okay, doing a brief pause for the cause, just for my future reference. For the top two bell housing bolts, the driver's side one has all of the grounds. It's one eye, but it has all the grounds tied together for the computer and stuff. It goes on that bell housing bolt, there's a like chassis ground on the other bell housing bolt. So that is the two tricks there. Uh, other things, so you can get the starter out with, so this, this has some old school uh, headers on it. It's a four bolt flange flat gasket. So I don't even know how old they are, but they're old. And if you take the starter and tip the back of it up and kind of flop the solenoid around a little bit, you can get the whole thing to pop up out of the bell housing. And it, there's only one spot where it'll do it, but you can get you can get the starter out that way. Wire tie it to the collector. I think that's pretty much the tricks there. The only other thing is it is so much easier instead of trying to deal with the crank bolt or the flex plate, you know, cause this has a serpentine belt on it, which grab really good. And you can just get on the alternator here and work the motor around to get the torque converter bolts. All right, that was an endeavor. Didn't take near as long though as the first time. So just kind of how I got this out of here. So I quickly realized that little jack over there is pretty snazzy. However, it doesn't go low enough for that giant bell housing to get out from under the truck if it's sitting on the jack. Still remains to be seen if I can get it out at this point, but I think I can. So what I did is I had to take the front two legs of it off. I already had it on there, so I got the floor jack under the bell housing to pick the bell housing up so I could take the front two whatever deals off of it. And then you have to be extremely careful at that point because even at a slight angle, the transmission just wants to slide right off of it. So I had it leaning back so it wouldn't do that. And then these little mats, whatever, like children's play mats, I think is what these ones were from way back when I was little. Uh, so they've been improving the quality of life because they're really nice to lay on because they are both warm, unlike this freezing cold concrete, and uh, it's just softer, so it's comfier. But in this set, what they were good for here is I put that one behind the rear wheels of this because this pretty well sticks to the concrete and the wheels wouldn't run it over. So that locked that in place. And then I put this other one up here at the front so I didn't just drop the bell housing on the ground, which I slid it off slowly and the bell housing just kind of dug into the foam and sat there. And then I went to the back and picked the tail housing up and then just pushed the jack off to the side and now it's sitting on the ground. Okay, that was way harder than it should have been. And honestly, it was getting to the point I was wondering if this whole transmission was going to be trashed because I couldn't get the pump out. So, I don't know what the problem is because I literally just got the O-ring to pop past and now the pump is free. I put oil on all that before I put it together and I have had... 
two, three solid evenings of trying to get this thing out of there. I mean, I did all the same stuff I did on the last one. It wasn't held in by anything other than the O-ring because it's free now. But man, I really was one. I was, I was really wondering if I was going to be able to figure out how to get this pump out without trashing it. And the only way I could get this thing out, and just idea of how much force I had, I had put on this thing. I put the bell housing on it, rat, wrapped a small ratchet strap around the, uh, the whatever this shaft, the part of the pump right here, not this one, but this one. Looped it around a bar and twisted it up until the ratchet strap was tight, pulling on this. And I tightened it up to the point that I actually started to break the strap. And then I did another one and, you know, got it all propped up and pried up. So I had both of those pulling on it, prying on it with the pry bar here. And then, and then hitting at the same time, someone else was hitting this end with the vice grips and the slide hammer. And this thing would not budge. It got about a 16th of an inch and totally locked down. So tonight, what I tried different, covered everything in ATF, which what, I don't know, I don't know, maybe that made a difference. I don't know why it would have made a difference. It was covered in ATF when it went in, but that's beside the point. And I got the pry bar like so and hammered around and got kind of tried to wiggle the pump back and forth a little bit. I was getting minimal movement out of it. I mean, enough that I wouldn't be able to thread the bolts back in, but I wiggled it around a little bit and I work, you know, work it up a little bit, hammer it down, work it up a little bit, hammer it down. Did that for probably those two things for probably 30 minutes, just trying to get this thing to have any kind of movement. And I, I got to the point where I could pry right here and I could get it to come up just a little bit and then it would stop. So then I came over here clamp the vice grips just like this. Hey, kudos to these vice grips, just some cobalt vice grips. I really am surprised I didn't break them during this deal. I mean, at one point I had a cheater pipe on either end, on either end of the handle to try and get as much grip out of it as I could. But anyways, I did this and I would hammer right here on the vice grips. You know, and of course it's starting to it would start to slide off. I've trashed the whatever, the cast the edge casting of the pump here, which it's not important really, I don't think, but Hammer around on that, come back over here, pry it just a little bit. Hammer, pry, hammer, pry. Come back over here, because this was a low spot, and hammer on that. And then, I mean, just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And finally, I have this stupid thing loose. I don't know how I'm going to prevent this from ever happening again. But it might even just be go with a different O-ring. Maybe that Jeg's O-ring is not well suited for this, because this should never have been this hard. <laughs> To get out of here but anyways it's out now now i get to see the carnage inside all right if you look closely you'll note the stationary side of the band is uh not really hooked up anyways follow me for more tech tips on how to turn your four-speed automatic into a two-speed power glide all right the chaos in the shop continues so, I'm going to try and get this put back together. What I forgot to mention is that I got a new O-ring to go around the pump and a new gasket to go behind it. And then I also got some replacement O-rings to go behind the pump bolts since the crush washers were a one-time use. And I went by a transmission shop and got some assembly goop of some kind that they used. And so I covered the O-ring in that, so maybe it'll make taking it apart easier in the future. Also, it's only about 28, 29 degrees today. And so this little guy is the only thing I have for heating here. And I don't know what brand it is, but this thing gets it. It's pretty good if you're looking at looking into getting one. It's got a metal housing on it. Puts out a decent bit of heat. Okay, and if I didn't show it before, uh, these are the little mounts that I made to obviously hold the transmission in the whatever little pivot things that you're supposed to hold it from. So it's a half inch, I think, half inch bolt welded to a piece of eighth inch thick square tubing to this flat plate, same deal on the other side. If I was 
I mean, I think I welded it pretty good. It ought to be plenty stout. If I had the material to do this over again, I probably would have gone with like a 3 8 plate on this, just something more robust. Same, kind of the same deal here, except for maybe put a, put a little strap across the top of this to strengthen it up and just added more, a little, you know, some little gussets and more material to it to make it stronger. For this, especially with all the bashing around on the pump, it seems to have held up just fine. The, uh, oh, a big thing I would do is find something that grabs either of these and runs all the way across and locates them. So, I don't know, a piece of C-channel or something that locks down over this and ties the two of them, ties the two of them together where they, they're not going to want to twist. Because that, that's probably the weak link of this is these bolts coming loose or not being tight enough originally. And I hammered down on them pretty good and then... The ratchet strap was there to help keep the transmission from flopping around and also keep everything engaged. But for a two-hour Saturday project, I think the little mounting system held up pretty good. All right, so I got this all cleaned up of any debris. And down there, I got this back on the pin. It was super easy. I mean, it's no wonder it came off. I basically just... With one hand, just kind of pulled that to the side a little bit and got a screwdriver in there, lined it up, and then pulled the whole drum assembly back. But now, it actually grabs the drum, so that ought to do it. All right, so put that goop all over the O-ring, so hopefully that'll live a long, happy life. I put some of it, uh, I cleaned the transmission fluid off of it because the transmission fluid just makes this stuff start to, uh, I guess, dissolve. But I put some of that goop under this plastic ring so that hopefully it'll hold it because it has two little tabs that have to line up. So I just need to put some oil on the bushings and then I think that is ready to go back in. And then over here, I got the gasket in, got my little studs hand threaded back in there to line everything up. I uh, need to hit the O-rings again with some transmission fluid. Same deal with the inside of the case here. Uh, there's also these ones and the back side of that. That's got to get hit. Pretty much anything, pretty much all of it just needs a little light coating of transmission fluid, I think. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that and then drop the pump in. All right. So I don't really like the washer design where you have a, like what the JEGS kit came with. So got new O-rings on these. Cleaned the mating surface, put a little bit of oil on it, or transmission fluid on it, just so it doesn't have a whole bunch of friction when torquing it down. So, I'm gonna put these in. All right, torque converter solenoid is in and torqued. This guy's in, clipped in, filter's obviously in, pump bolts are torqued. So, next thing is gonna be put the pan on. All right, got it off the stand. Went ahead and pulled the seal for the drive shaft off. Caught a glimpse of the bushing and it did not look like it was loving life. So I went ahead and pulled the tail shaft and the bushing is absolutely destroyed. So pretty confident that all the brass in the pan came from this guy and I already started beating it out. That's why it's sitting there. Uh, so to get this guy out, I didn't have a socket. I had a socket that was too big and one that was barely too small. So I used a punch and kind of whatever hit around on the in four spots on the outside of the bushing to kind of fold the edge of it in a little bit. And then socket extension in backwards. And that's why I've been tapping it out. And then I obviously got to get a new one of these. And I'm not really sure why this happened. So this is a used tail shaft housing. This transmission, as I mentioned earlier, is a, this started out life as a four wheel drive transmission. That's why it has the deep pan on it and requires the four wheel drive filter. It was, before it went to this truck, it was converted to two wheel drive, which requires a different output shaft and actually a longer output shaft. You would think the four wheel drive one would have a longer one, but that's not the case and obviously a two-wheel drive tail shaft instead of the adapter for the transfer case. So this was all used. Uh, the guy who actually rebuilt the transmission the last time swapped out the output shaft and put this on it. And I remembered 
the yolk having a little bit of play in it whenever we put all this together, but I didn't think anything of it and didn't want to mess with it, so I left it. So it's possible this bushing might have been pretty rough to begin with and just nobody noticed. Or, I don't know, maybe the yolk is messed up. The, I mean, the yolk itself looks fine. I'll have to check its diameter against a new bushing. And I'm going to see if I can't get a new rubber piece for the carrier bearing because the carrier bearing does have a little bit of play in it. Uh, just from the rubber that holds the actual bearing. That rubber has shrunk over the years and it lets the bearing walk around. So I'm going to try and find one of those in case that was the problem. And try and I'll finish getting this guy out and then I'll have to get a new one obviously and we'll get it put back in. All right, so I got a new AC Delco bushing and it's up Scoob. And it fits, it feels like it fits the way it's supposed to on the yoke for the drive shaft. This one really doesn't have any play in it. It's, I mean, it moves free, but it doesn't have any play. So this is a bearing race installing tool and I flipped the, whatever the installing bit upside down. So I have something, you know, flat to push this in with. And then I just kind of tapped around and got it started and now it's going in pretty easy. So I'll use this guy to get it pushed in there. All right, that actually worked way better than I thought it was going to. It didn't even, doesn't feel like it tore the bushing up at all. So every now and then I do something right, I guess. All right, seal is in. Used a two inch socket to get it in. It was pretty easy and put a little RTV around the outside of it. So hopefully there's no chance of it leaking. All right, figured we'd go over a few things just before this gets stoked back into the truck. So tail housing's torqued, bell housing's torqued. So all that should be fine. Speed sensor is back in it. Um, da, 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 da. I don't really remember anything interesting. There was one part in here, I think I forgot to mention, where I used the punch to fold in the side of the old bushing. I actually got onto the case just a little bit, and so I used a, a little rat tail file and cleaned that up and then wiped the housing back out. So that is pretty much that. I couldn't find the O-ring that was on this, so I just reused the old one since it wasn't leaking. A uh, thing future me is gonna have to deal with is this plug had a little bit of transmission fluid in the bottom of it. And more likely than not, what that is coming from is one of these pins must be letting fluid around it. So at some point that'll start leaking, but I didn't notice it until I took it apart and fixing it in the future really isn't a big deal. It's just drain the fluid, drop the pan, change out the wiring harness. It wouldn't be that big of a deal. Uh, other thing of note, so whenever I did the trans cooler lines on this, well actually this was probably before that, um, another instance of getting some really good help from a forum, just, you know, similar to the whole T55 plus whatever fancy bit for the bell housing bolts, that nonsense. I was on a forum trying to figure out which of these lines was the supply to the cooler so that I could figure out which one needed to have the trans temp gauge in it. And whichever one it was, the dude in the forum had it backwards. And so he's, he said the wrong one. And I don't know, I don't remember if anybody corrected it or not, but regardless, I read that, went and cut the wrong line for my, for my temp gauge and uh, ended up splicing it together and then obviously moving the gauge to the other side. So at that point it was compression fittings, which I don't know, everybody says, well, they just blow apart if you put, you know, transmission fluid to it. I don't foresee that ever really being a problem just cause this is only like a 50 PSI circuit, I think. Cause you have the loop fluid and then you have the actual line pressure that makes the clutches happen. This fluid does not make clutches happen. This is just cooler torque converter lube it's nothing incredibly high pressure. It's the low pressure circuit. Anyways, so I had these two cuts in it here and I ended up, when I redid the trans cooler lines, I flared it all and used these little fittings. And this location for these, I mean, this one, it kind of would make more sense to have it closer down here, but 
make it so much easier to get this thing in and out instead of having to deal with these stupid things. Because I only, I only did that once or twice in this truck, having to get these clips out, and it sucked, best I remember. Either trying to get this unthreaded or trying to get that out. There's not a whole lot of room, and it was just a pain to try and deal with it, especially if you got the clip out and the line out, and then you tried to, were trying to get the clip back in there with it under the truck. I remember that being a pain, but having these two little guys here made that a whole lot easier. I have appreciated that modification. So again, the new bolts, the hex bolts, blue Loctite on them, should all be ready to go back in the truck. Okay, so it's on the jack. Getting the transmission on it was by far the easy part. And I like how this thing came with this little chain because it is definitely necessary because it definitely would have lost the transmission when I loaded the torque converter into it. And loading the torque converter into it while laying on your side is quite the challenge as it turns out. But it's in there and if you listen, You can hear the pump clicking, and I can actually push the torque converter all the way in until it hits the bell housing, so. So, I believe that is seated and doing what it's supposed to do. So now, I can try and get it bolted back up where it's supposed to be. And I got asked about this cross member at one point, and it was made by Early Classic. Other than that, I don't really remember anything about it. But it seems to work pretty good. It just fits in between the frame rails. It's got eight bolts that hold it and then two for the transmission mount. And I really have no complaints about it. It seems to fit really good. All right, uh, this is the drive shaft, not the transmission, but we're gonna take a little, little side trip here while this is out. So when, I, when we first got this truck going, I pulled all this apart like I have it now because uh, that way I wanted, I was able to clean and put some new grease in this bearing. And when I was messing with it, it had a hard spot in it. So I wanted to take a part and look at it. And the hard spot was uh, this was hitting this piece. So it wasn't actually anything inside the bearing, but I just wanted to go ahead and make sure there was some grease in there. And it looks like it needs a little bit more. But the way that this comes apart is so this guy sits on there i just used a regular two jaw puller pull that off really no drama or issues with that the next thing is then this guy is covering it from there i just got on this side right here and just kind of tapped around you know spun it tapped and it came off without a lot of drama and then finally there's this guy, which is actually what seals up the bearing. And to tell you the truth, I don't remember how exactly I got this apart the first time. So I, it looks like I jacked it up a little bit there. I think I just got a pick or something under one side of it. But however I did that, <laughs> yeah, by the, by the looks of it, I think I just I must have got a pick or something up behind it. And then I worked it out. So it tore it up a little bit, but... I mean, it's either tear this up a little bit and not grease the bearing or, you know, mess this up, put some grease in the bearing, and hopefully the whole thing will live a lot longer. Because the thing that surprised me about this is so most everything, General Motors, at least that I've messed with, is interchangeable parts. It's like you have a part, they used it on 15 different cars for 30 years. This is the first instance, at least with these older trucks, that... It's not like that. This is a really weird part, and I don't understand what the deal is. So the Chevys, so that one, for example, <clears throat> has a totally different carrier bearing than this one. It's a real spindly-looking thing. It's got the bearing, and it has a little flat piece that comes up and a flat piece on top and two bolt holes that suck it up to the cross member. Really weak design, and they apparently break semi-frequently but those are the only ones you can really find at parts stores this style is the heavy duty style so 
uh, I don't know if GMC's came with the other design. I mean, this one's a C15 and it has the heavy duty design. And as far, at least what I read, this is used all the way up until one ton trucks. So maybe it's because these never really wore out, but you, there isn't, there, there's not a drop in replacement for this bearing or this rubber piece that isolates the bearing. So I really want to make sure that I try and preserve this as best I can. So I'm going to get some grease in this and this rubber has shrunk. So it, it lets the whole thing walk around a little bit. And I don't know, I don't know what I can put around this to tighten it back up in the bracket, but I got to find something to put around it to tighten it back up. Cause I don't want it to just sit there and shake around and beat up the bearing and beat itself up. All right. So I was going to go over this again because it was in a much older video whenever I... Well, it was before the truck was even driving at that point, whenever I went over the drive shaft. Uh, but a problem I had with this whenever I was first getting it into the truck is the splines didn't line up perfect. Now, I I mean, it's splined all the way around. To admit, I mean, they all look the same. I would assume that it should be able to go on in any orientation. So I don't know if it's just the way that it's worn in or what, but it came apart fine. This is way back, you know, whenever before the truck was driving, it came apart fine. And I went to put it back together and it slid on a little bit and then it was kind of stuck. Where I made a mistake is at that point, take it off, make sure everything's clean and then try it again. But the mistake I did is I tried, well, I'll just, I'll just tap it with a hammer and see if it'll just work its way over whatever the problem is. Huge mistake, even though I just lightly tapped on it just a few times and then realized it was wrong and pulled it back off. It just jacked up the end of the spline enough where I couldn't get it to go on in any orientation. And I had to sit there with a little hand file and, you know, file, clean up all the ends of the splines on this end and this end. And it was a huge pain. So after that, I marked it. And I marked it against this guy here which obviously I had this guy off. So I reassembled it here. This is the only, or at least I'm pretty sure this is still the only orientation because I had to sit there and rotate it around a few times before it finally slid in. But I want to make sure to get this mark relined up. So that way I can hammer this back on and it'll be where the marks actually work. So I don't know why it's like that. Maybe this one's just weird, but it seems like this only, these splines only want to go together one way. All right, uh, I went ahead and painted this because it was getting pretty pitted and gross looking because I guess it just it's just going to hold water in there if it gets wet. So I cleaned it, painted both sides. And what I found for this piece is I took a piece of, I cut off a piece of tube from like a bicycle tube, wrapped it around the outside of it and put it all together and that seemed to tighten up any any gap between this piece of rubber and the metal. So I mocked it up earlier and it seemed like it was gonna work all right. So I'm gonna put it back together that way. All right, final review installment of the Harbor Freight transmission jack. It stores vertical pretty easy. I use the safety chain to hold it together. Otherwise it just wants to flop down and have the jack handle stuck in it back there. Uh, ideally, I think it'd be pretty cool if you could have it hanging hanging on the one of the low sections of the wall, but this was more convenient for now just to stick it in here. But the fact that it can set up vertical is kind of nice. Oh no. I think the carp thing it tore the pan up. God, mama's gonna be pissed. All right, so I got the truck out and I am incredibly pleased that it now has second gear. And third. And fourth. That is just dandy. I am so glad that at least that part of it is fixed. Hopefully it doesn't leak. But if nothing else, I'm glad I was able to figure out what went wrong the first time.
Just kidding. That was somebody else. I wish this would do that, but there's no way. There's my little one tire fire. So yeah, it was in first. And then it went to second. Then it started to bog down. So it shipped it back to first and rode it out to about there. Still fun though. like the exhaust in this and how it sounds <laughs> but it's kind of a case of the exhaust is writing checks the motor can't cash <laughs> 